James. Hello. How are you? Hello, how are you? Good, I'm pretty good. Good, good. Congratulations on this a fantastic Thank and fitting you. end to the uh, to the franchise or the trilogy, as you know, as it is. Um, what, what, what have been your most memorable sort of events of doing this franchise over the last ten years? I would say most of the most memorable moments have just been moments between me and different members of the cast and different members of the crew. Um, that, you know, getting to know these people and loving these people, like any, you know, like so many people work with people they love, and I'm the same way. And, uh, you know, I just remember the, the great moments with uh, Chris Pratt, with my brother Sean. Probably the, oh, yeah. the greatest joy of my life is we did a scene dancing together as Rocket and Groot, and it was one of those moments when everybody on, you know, on the set started crying, and... Uh, it was just beautiful. It was just like we've been playing and making movies since we were little boys. And then to be able to be fortunate enough to be doing this as adults, still playing and still making movies. Yeah. Was this always going to be a sort of an origin story of some kind in your mind when you were thinking about the third one? I did. I've been thinking about this story since I even started working on volume one. So when they first came to me and talked to me about doing the, the you know, Guardians volume one, I was like, God, this could be a little bit weird. It sounds kind of like Bugs Bunny in the middle of the Avengers. And I thought, well, if there is a raccoon, a talking raccoon, how did this raccoon come about? And I started to think about where he might come from and who he might be. And I realized it's just this little animal that was taken and turned into something he was never meant to be. And that he was an extremely sad, lonely, ostracized little creature and probably the saddest creature in the universe. That to me was the seeds for the entire Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. And so we were always headed in the direction that this movie, uh, the, the story that this movie tells. Was that a way for you to explain how, how he became who he was? Is a this grouchy sort of, you know, like no nonsense taken uh, creature of some kind? Yeah, I think it was, it's really, you know, I think this movie is about us as human beings. This is a story about this poor little guy that had all this, you know, started out as an innocent, sweet little guy and little by little was turned into this cranky, angry, violent, <laughs> mean, uh, cruel... <laughs> little creature and that's all just covering up who he really is and where he really comes from the fear he had as a shivering little uh kit baby raccoon um and so this is the story of how he became that way and also it's a story about the path home how do you go back to where you came from um but in an adult way yeah can we talk about the uh, soundtrack that i think most people want to want us to talk about i mean uh, thankfully i think you've been able to move things away from the 70s and bring in more sort of rock anthem indie anthems towards the sort of the thing talk me through how that went and how did you go about picking all of those songs well i'll tell you it was difficult because on the first two movies i did i had those you know songs from the 1970s primarily primarily 1970s one hit wonder pop hits and it made it much easier to choose because there's such a limited amount of songs and on this one you know peter quill gets the zune at the end of volume two and i have songs from the 80s and 90s the 2000s, the 70s, um, and so I had everything to choose from. And sometimes more ch choice is a lot more difficult than less choice. So I, I, I really sweat a lot putting the soundtrack together. Um, I was uh, convinced it was difficult and I wasn't sure how it was going to go, uh, but I put much more work into this one than I did the first two movies. What, what has been your favorite uh, tune out of this soundtrack? I mean, my, my favorite is the opening one, which I'm not going to give away, and the Beastie Boys track. What has been yours? Well, those are definitely two of my favorites. <laughs> um, I, I definitely love, I love different songs in different ways. There's a song uh, by The Replacements called I Will Dare, which is one of my all-time favorite songs. There's a song by the Mowgli's called San Francisco, which played at my wedding with my wife, so I have you know, particular love for that song. Um, but I also really love Dog Days Are Over by Florence and the Machine. Oh, yeah. I think it's maybe the best pop song of the past 20 years. So I love having that in there, Bruce Springsteen. I mean, it, there's just, there really isn't a, a loser song in there. Yeah. Finally, what will you miss about this whole, you know, 
adventure with all your friends? What will you miss the most? I'll miss my friends and I'll miss the characters. You know, I love these, I love the people I make these movies with from the bottom of my heart. Chris Pratt is one of my best friends. Um, I, I love, you know, Pom Clementi, if and I talk all the time, Karen Gillan. And so I'll just really miss those people. But honestly, I'll also really miss the characters. I love Rocket like he's, uh, you know, my son, you know. I love Nebula like she's, you know, my friend. Um, so I'll, I'll really miss the characters, I think, is, I, I, you know, I'll see my friends again. I'm going to see Chris Pratt. We'll hang out next week, right? But I won't, may not see, you know, Nebula again in that respect. So uh, um, that's who I'll miss the most. Thank you so much. I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, um, so congratulations much. on a fantastic um, ending. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Cheers. Okay, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey!